as a team, top scoring team in the conference, but NC State, one of the best defensively. So here we go from Purcell Pavilion, NC State, Notre Dame, off and running. A little bit of a shaky start, but now recovered by <laughs> NC State. Tanaya Rivers with the ball in her hands, passes off to Madison Hayes. You know, Mimi Collins tonight, weren't sure if she'd be able to go. So she is on the bench, unavailable for NC State. As Rivers took the first shot, and then for Notre Dame, you're used to seeing this starting five. Same one they've had now for the 11th straight game. They're eight and two in this lineup since Sonia Citron has returned. Anna DeWolf coming off a spectacular game. 24 points, six of nine from three in that ridiculous win for Notre Dame <laughs> down in Tallahassee, Jasmine. I know you were on the call for oh. that one. Double overtime victory for the Irish. I was. We knew it would be a good one, and they gave us our money's worth. It was a fun game to call. So Zoe Brooks getting the start in place of Mimi Collins. A little smaller for the Wolfpack, but they go inside to Baldwin for the first two. And Hayes definitely a player that's capable of playing that four position. She's already versatile at the wing spot, and she's just tough. So it'll be fun to see how she she plays that forward position today. Watson inside to Westbound. You see both teams really establishing their inside game first. River Baldwin had that first touch for State, and then you can see them determined to get the ball to Maddie. Rivers going back inside to Baldwin. Has it tapped away by the nation's best at doing just that. Hidalgo, number one in the nation, only player in the country with more than 100 steals. But the Irish turn it right back over. Only meeting of the regular season for these two teams as Zoe Brooks says hello. You know, it's been a year for freshmen, and Zoe is also <laughs> having a great season. Typically, the spark off of the bench for the Wolfpack getting a start tonight. What a great opportunity for her, and you see she's starting off good, making a three. First start for Zoe since January 18th. Here is Citron short on the three-point attempt. And we found out something interesting, a nice <laughs> little connection between these two teams. Talking to Zoe earlier today, so she was looking forward to this matchup, this environment and also looking forward to facing off against her former teammate in AAU and McDonald's All-American game, Hannah Hidalgo. Oh, look at that. How cute is that? You know, you, you forget with the type of the, the way these players play, how young they are. <laughs> this is not that long ago. <laughs> 2023 McDonald's All-American game, they were on the same team. Hidalgo is co-MVP of that game on with Juju Watkins. Another turnover. For the Irish on the offensive end, NC State out to the 7-2 lead. And here are the two Jersey girls who know one another well, faced off as rivals in high school, but teammates in AAU and in that McDonald's game. Brooks looked like she might have gotten an open look on the baseline, but the defense recovered. Hidalgo leading the way, pulls up for the jumper. And that is more what NC State would want, right? They want a jumper rather than a layup. Yeah, they absolutely want to contain Hannah, keep them in front of her, and not let her get to her right hand. Foul called on the play will go against Brooks, her first. And how will Notre Dame keep their composure here? Not the offensive start they were looking for. That's been something with them, just starting games locked in, focused uh, on both sides of the ball. They've, at certain times in the season, got themselves in trouble with mistakes or turnovers early. So being on their home floor, I would expect them to, you know, really try to lock in soon. Yeah, they got down in Tallahassee, if I remember correctly, right? Florida State got off to a good start in that game. So the one thing that Neil Ivey has learned about this team is they know how to get back into it. But you'd rather not be in the hole to begin with. <laughs> Friendly roll for leading scorer for the Wolfpack, Isaiah James, now 10-2 in favor of the visitors. Crowd starting to get behind this Irish team, remind them that this is their home floor. Citron, a little off on the shot, but then it'll stay here with the Irish. Ada 
run by the Wolf Pack. Notre Dame just one of five to start the game. And they look a little hesitant. They look like they're still trying to figure it out, still trying to see where they're going to get their best offense from. Nat Marshall now into the game. She gets it. Brooks gets past Hidalgo, dishes to Baldwin. Six points in the game for River Baldwin and an electric start for Zoe Brooks at NC State. Carolina State off to a hot start here in South Bend, up 12 to 2. And how about this nice hesitation taken dish by the freshman Zoe Brooks to River Baldwin? That's nice. That was worth another look, I'd say. Absolutely. Going against her former teammate and rival Hidalgo. And it might have been a little extra in there for Zoe Brooks. So let's see what the Irish do coming out of that timeout. KK Bransford, Nat Marshall. Both into the game for Notre Dame. And Brooks has already picked up one foul. I think she just picked up number two. Has to be careful. Neil Ivy, a great point guard in her own right. ACC Coach of the Year last year as the Irish won the ACC regular season title. You know, Notre Dame in that Florida State game found themselves in a similar situation. I believe they were down 16-6. Coach Ivy called a timeout settled her group and they came back out with more intensity on the defensive side of things. But you have to play good defense without fouling, right? So not too many fouls yet to have to worry about, but Marshall picks up one, trying to pressure the ball. Definitely one of those ones you want to get back yeah. though. You know, that far away from the basket, a little bit of a maybe a frustration foul or just not really thinking. You don't want to, you don't want to make those. Lacey Steele in for NC State. Baldwin already has six, make it eight. And Coach Moore talked about establishing River Baldwin down low in this game, and so far they have been intentional about doing that. She just makes such a difference with her presence inside for this NC State team. Missed three games at the beginning of January, and they absolutely did miss her in that stretch, but such a force on both ends of the floor. She is excellent at drawing charges. I tell you, when your center's taking charges, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Here you see River Baldwin just establishing that dominance on the low block, and she's doing it on both ends. She slides over and helps side and takes the charge on the chest. So the struggle's continuing here early for Notre Dame on the Irish's home floor. Rivers. Better shot affected by a couple of Notre Dame players. Now Hidalgo leading the break. So good, but the screen is going to be called for the foul, and Isaiah James celebrating. That's exactly what she was trying to do. Yeah, you saw her try to sell one earlier on some screens, and I think for sure she got that was a good one. You know, she was staying in front of Hannah, keeping her eyes locked on her, and I don't know, Maddie looked like she might have. I don't know, maybe you got to give her a little bit more time to turn and see it. Either way, it's been called twice now against Notre Dame. Here's a turnover on James. Crowd's going to appreciate that after the last <laughs> play. There's a reason why, though, when we asked Wes Moore, he had a good nickname for his leading scorer, Zaya James, this year, said the show. He's got Tania Rivers that makes him go. He's got Madison Hayes uses the glue. Isaiah James is the show. You know, I, yeah, I like when Notre Dame plays with more pace. Just because they can't get out in transition, in the half court, they can still play with a little bit more tempo. I think they find more success that way. Just two points in the game so far for Notre Dame. River Baldwin. Misses on this attempt. Hidalgo. Gets some space for herself from the elbow, round and out. Stays with Notre Dame.
DeWolf. Can she be that X factor again as she was in the win at Florida State? And coming off a game that big, she has to have a ton of confidence coming into today. So it would be nice for Notre Dame to see her get hot again. And she talked about it after that game when on ACC PM and just talked about, I was just taking the shots. My teammates found me. They came within the flow of the offense. I'm trying to force anything. Eight on the shot clock here for NC State. First time we've really had a shot clock situation. And that's not a bad shot for Sanaya River. She's good at the mid-range, but I'd like to see her maybe repost River Baldwin in that, in that in instance. And Notre Dame absolutely ice cold from the start here. One of ten from the floor. Trying to get it done on the defensive end now. And they do at least get an empty possession from the Wolfpack this time down the floor. Hidalgo. Offensive foul. And I think this officiating crew is really going to have their hands full tonight. Denise Brooks, Jeffrey Smith, Tom Danaher. We know what NC State's part of their game plan is. They are looking to draw those fouls on the legal screens. They're looking for the charges. You gotta make sure you get them right. And I mean, Hannah Hidalgo, a player that is so great in the open floor when she can get downhill and get in the paint. So it is a good, you know, it's a good thing for the state to notice and recognize that and come over and take the charge, but Hannah's gonna have to adjust. Yeah, three offensive fouls, at least, have been called in this game so far against Notre Dame. A couple on illegal screens. If you call them that way, there's a good finish. And then a couple on the charge variety. It's a nice finish by Isaiah James. Going right, finishing with the left. She is a lefty. That is her comfort hand to use. Citron. Maybe that's the bucket right there that gets Notre Dame going. This Irish crowd packing Purcell as they always do. Certainly hoping so. Snaps a 14 to nothing run for NC State. James lining up the three. She has made more three-pointers than any other Wolfpack player this season. 43 of them for Isaiah James. DeWolf hits six against Florida State. Looking for Citron. Bad spot to try to corral the basketball. Eighth turnover by Notre Dame this quarter. Yeah, I think they're just searching for a rhythm, searching for a flow. Hayes, yeah, that looks good. Best three-point shooter by percentage, almost 45% on the season. And Madison Hayes is a player I'm really impressed with this season. I talked about it a lot earlier today. She reminds me of Alicia Clark from the Las Vegas Aces. Just Swiss Army knife, does whatever her team needs, and she's really shooting it well this season. Madison Hayes showing you a little bit of range with the fake first and then Drains a three. Yeah, her three-point percentage in conference play is 44%. That would lead the ACC if she had enough attempts. But she told us that this year has really changed my whole world, her <laughs> words. And she just said, you know, being a senior, she's a transfer from Mississippi State. It's her third year with the Wolfpack. She does have an option to potentially come back. She's still going to make that decision. But just in terms of what it means to be a leader on this NC State team. Yeah, we told her that, that she's the glue player for this team. And she just talked about how much pride she yeah. takes in being that. Baldwin, tough take. Notre Dame can go two for one here. Westbelt. Rattles it home for three. Not much time if they get it back, so I'd expect State to take this last one. Sanaya Rivers in communication with her head coach, looking over at Westmore, watching the clock. From the corner, James, too strong. There is another chance here for Notre Dame. DeWolf launches from midcourt. And this quarter, all about the visiting ends. Isaiah James, if you've watched her this season, she can really put some points on the board, and it's fun and flashy, so she's definitely the show. 
Now let's see who steps up for this Notre Dame team. Hidalgo is on the bench. Westfeld has seven in the game of Notre Dame's nine. And Maddie Westfeld being a very key piece for this team as well. We talk about they go as Hannah goes, but they also go as Westfeld goes. When she's playing well, it's good for Notre Dame. Showing some zone on this end of the floor. See if they can quiet this NC State offense. Lacey Steele back to Rivers. No points in the game yet for Sanaya Rivers. And a turnover by Hayes. Yeah, this is some of what you're talking about with Maddie Westfeld, that she's just that, she's so consistent, but you can see the numbers just a little bit better, and then Notre Dame wins this year versus losses. Yeah, she's just solid for them. She has a high IQ. She's able to facilitate and pass for them as well. You'll see her have a lot of success around that ACC logo in man and zone. All right, Watson is really working hard for positioning inside with the 6'5 grad transfer, Lizzie Williamson defending for NC State. Hayes drives. And this is good for Notre Dame, getting some stops, getting some chances to come back on offense and put the ball in the basket. DeWolf lines up the three. Rivers, tough shot. The defense seems to have picked up a little bit or been more effective at least for Notre Dame. Now can they get the offense going? Not with another turnover. They had nine in the first quarter. It absolutely has. And you talked about Rivers being scoreless so far in this game, and it's a lot because of that. Just, you know, not letting the game come to her a little bit, not trying to force it. Uh, they've done a good job at sharing the ball. They did a great job at sharing the ball against Pitt. And so coming into this game, they had started the game with, what did we say, it was, uh, you know, five made field goals on three assists. So yep. that was where they found that success. So I'd like to see State get back to some more of that. It all go back on the floor now for Notre Dame. No points in the game. She's 0 for 4 so far. Leads the ACC in scoring 25 points per game. Let your defense guide your offense. Your coaches talk about that so much. I know you're a big proponent of that. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I'm impressed with by Hannah as well because there have been nights where she's been off scoring the ball and maybe has had to be a little high volume, but she gets to the free throw line and she impacts the game in so many different ways that she's still effective. Big lineup out on the floor right now for NC State. Maddie Cox there with the block. 6'2 freshman out of Flower Mountain, Texas. Sister of the Lauren Cox out of Baylor. Spent some time in the WNBA as well. Steele crosses over. Nobody there for the rebound. Hidalgo picks it up. Westfeld working off the screen. Still stuck at nine. The NC State lead was 10. But Isaiah James adds a couple more. She's got I, seven in the game. And I don't know about going for that steal. Gave her kind of the moment, momentum to go to her left hand, which is what Isaiah James wants to do. It all goes so good off the drive, but can't finish. Rivers. Jump ball is the call. And it's going to stay on this end with NC State. on for Watson. Got Baldwin at 6'5", Maddie Cox at 6'2", and of course the length of those guards. Cox will take the three and hit it. Don't let that size deceive you. She likes to shoot the three. She's not shot it particularly well this season, but that's just her third made three. She took that one with confidence. She, she did. Couldn't tell that she's not shooting a great percentage. <laughs> Well, she made one in the last game as well for NC State, a win at Pitt. Sometimes all you need is to see it go through the net. Absolutely. Notre Dame could use a little more of that, but have to hang on to the basketball. Two on the shot clock for Hidalgo. Circus shot off the front of the rim. It did hit the front of the rim, so 
ignore that buzzer. I mean, when a shot goes up, just look at the bodies of NC State making contact and boxing out. It's the reason they lead the conference in rebounds for that. That's tight right now, though. Even at 15 rebounds apiece, that was really a part of the game. Both teams, both coaches stress. Rivers. Stopped on her way to the basket. Back out it goes for Steele. No. But that's the kind of take I want to see from Sanaya Rivers. Getting down lane lines, getting down here. Now River Baldwin just takes it away. And it's the biggest lead of the game now for NC State. I would expect Notre Dame to probably try to extend some pressure here soon on the defensive end. What else on the offensive end does Notre Dame need to see? Westbelt, she's been the go-to player so far in this game. She has, like I said, just playing with a little bit more pace and tempo into their actions, into screens, cuts, playing, moving off of the ball as well. Nine points in the game for Maddie Westbelt, and playing some good defense on this end, causing the turnover. Timeout on the floor. Notre Dame still with a ways to go to catch up with the Wolfpack. Question, what would you get? To get a Castle Coliseum for Duke and number 12, Virginia Tech. It'll be interesting to see how Virginia Tech responds second time around on their home floor tonight. They lost in Cameron on January 18th. And they always have a threat inside with Liz Kitley, the two-time ACC Player of the Year. Yeah, she's definitely fun to watch. That turnaround jumper, kind of unstoppable. It is pretty. Meanwhile, the NC State defense has had Notre Dame's number in this game. The Irish just two of 10 in this quarter, 23% for the game. The Irish has found a little rhythm with Westbelt, though, so I think they might need to settle and play through her a little bit. Put her in the actions, put the ball in her hands, and see what the, how State's defense responds. Yeah, I mean, she has all but two of Notre Dame's points so far in this game. James gets it inside to Baldwin, who has a dozen. State's just playing with so much confidence and composure. You see them pass the ball around, attack closeouts, penetrate, find each other. It's good basketball. Now this team has really started to find itself as Citron adds to the scoring column now. She has four, Westbelt has the rest for Notre Dame. It's hard to believe that this NC State team was picked to finish eighth in the preseason. <laughs> you probably heard this by now, but they use that as a chip on the shoulder. More good defense play here, causing the jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of Notre Dame. Isaiah James gets into the seams of the defense and finds River Baldwin for the easy dish and finish down low. And then finally on the other end, Citron pulls up with a pretty jumper. So many capable scorers for both of these teams. Citron averaging over 16 points per game. Excellent three-point shooter as well. Keeps the ball in her hands on the drive. And Zoe Brooks started this game. No Mimi Collins in case you missed that earlier. Out with injury for NC State. But this bigger NC State lineup has been on the floor more often. Yeah, I mean. You know, Notre Dame has size, so maybe matching up to the size just works a little better. They've obviously had a great half. Six seconds on the shot clock. Rivers from the free throw line has her first point to the game. And that's what it needs to look like for her. That was just a nice rhythm crossover into her mid-range game, which is great. Hidalgo plays mad. Neil Ivy says she loves it. <laughs> Loves that she plays with that edge. She's had a frustrating start, she and the rest of this Notre Dame team, other than maybe Westbelt. You just get that feeling she has proven time and again, this 11-time ACC Rookie of the Week. Hannah Hidalgo, that's the most ever by a player, and she's proven you just can't go 40 minutes keeping her quiet. 
You see State icing some of the action to keep Notre Dame on the sideline. And it messes up their spacing. Three seconds now to shoot. West Bell for three is good. Maddie Westfeld has definitely come to play today. She's on pace already for a double-double. Yeah, she is locked in right now. Maddie Westfeld, 12 points, eight rebounds. KK Bransford pulls down the rebound, then is fouled by Baldwin. Notre Dame's had trouble scoring so far in this half, but Maddie Westfeld has not. There you see her draining the three. She's having a great performance tonight. Incredible that she has nine double-doubles this season, and that equals the total that she had in her first three years. It's been so much of a force for Notre Dame, a little short on the three-point attempt. James had time to see the three. Bransford in a sea of red picks it up for the Irish. Hidalgo giving a look. She stays on empty. 0 for 8, 0 for 9 now in the game for the ACC's leading score. Baldwin. Working against Watson, little help defensively. The dish off just in time, and Madison Hayes is fouled. State just doing a great job at moving without the basketball. I feel like you can really see how they are playing off of each other as a team. Yeah, they've been impressive, especially on the offensive end. And playing some good defense too, really both sides. Tomorrow afternoon, our Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational coverage continues with North Carolina and UCF at 2 Eastern. Saturday morning, Georgia Tech takes on Northwestern. And Sunday morning, the Tar Heels are back on ACCN, squaring off against number six, Washington. Little softball coming your way on ACCN. And an empty trip to the free throw line for Hayes. Great work by Citron. You, she gets stuck on the baseline. It looks like she has nowhere to go. She makes something out of nothing and ends up with two points. Notre Dame inching closer, but still a double-digit deficit with halftime moving, looming, excuse me. James, eight on the shot clock, double team, but a foul is called against the Irish. And that's a tough break right there. That was a great opportunistic trap on Isaiah James, and they just bail her out with the foul. Here you see Citron making everybody out. Comes up with two points on the baseline after picking up her dribble. 18 seconds, shot clock is off. Hidalgo going after it with Rivers. Gets the jump ball called. And that is the fire that you love to see from the freshman. Possession arrow for NC State, though. Yeah. And you definitely need to see it. Her intensity is what drives the rest of the team. They feed off of it. When she's locked in, when she's playing with that anger, everybody else comes with her. NC State making a statement so far here on the road at Prezel Pavilion. How will they end the half? Not with a bucket. But they do indeed have the lead. 12 points, NC State leading Notre Dame. And Jay, highly anticipated matchup here tonight. The only top 20 matchup in the ACC tonight in women's hoops. And it has belonged to the visiting NC State Wolfpack so far. Watson trying to work that high-low game with Westbelt. And that's the exact right look and execution. Maddie didn't come up with the bucket, but I like that decision on how to start this half for Notre Dame. Starting five back on the floor for NC State. Zoe Brooks only played a little over four minutes in the first half, did pick up two fouls. James, shot fake. 
And foul is called of the offensive variety. Notre Dame fell victim to that yeah. a couple times in the first half. Now they get it in they their did. favor. I would have liked to see the extra. You can't see it there, but Zoe Brooks is on the wing, open and ready to take that shot. Um, by percentages, you know, not her thing this year, but she's definitely capable of knocking that down. Now you talked about that, the ice on the sideline. If you get an opportunity to point that out, if you see it here and what you think Notre Dame needs to do, big drive, big block by James on that attempt. Just to get an indication, if we see that situation again, what it looks like. Right now, 13 seconds on the shot clock. Watson, nobody's stepping to her at all. But it's off the back of the iron. James. Rivers, bit of a slow start in this game. Two points, but just one of eight from the floor in the first half for the pack. Two defenders around River Baldwin. Yep, you see that adjustment from Notre Dame to double, double River Baldwin. She respectfully has garnered that attention. Westbell left open for three. Rivers with the rebound, such a good rebounder, had six in the first half. That battle of the boards key according to both coaches in this matchup. It's a plus two advantage for NC State at the moment. Make it plus three. James. NC State didn't have the strongest finish to the second quarter, but Notre Dame just was unable to really claw back that much into it, but getting another opportunity here to do that. No score yet in the quarter. The travel will turn it back over to Notre Dame. Yeah, and this half's kind of off to a little bit of a sticky start. No real flow or rhythm for either team to start this half. I'm sure you've been in those games, Jazz, where sometimes you expect the level to be so high because these two teams, when they get together, it's you know NCAA Sweet 16 a couple years ago. It's ACC tournament last year. I mean, the last four games have been decided by six points or less. Yeah, and in our conversation with Coach Ivy, I like what she said about just how scout heavy the ACC is. All these teams are so familiar with each other. The talent level is through the roof. So when they play, it can be like this. You know, you have to over execute. As Hannah Hidalgo comes up with the steal, Hannah doing what Hannah does. She gets herself on the board in Hannah fashion, which is what I like to see. First points of the game for Hannah Hidalgo. Ten points now. The lead for NC State tries to take it away from her former teammate, Zoe Brooks. She's having none of it. That little game within the game has been kind of fun to watch when Brooks has been out there to New Jersey natives. Rivers wants the three, gets it. Sanaya Rivers, another player who's not by percentages shooting well from the three-point line, but definitely capable of knocking it down. And when she is scoring at all three levels, she is fun and hard to stop. Hidalgo, speaking of hard to stop, tough drive. She looks right up at the referee for a foul, but none called. Hannah Hidalgo went scoreless in the first half, but here you see Swiper doing what Swiper does, coming away with the steal for the layup for her first two points of the game. You can get a little joy in that, don't I you? I do. The, the defensive <laughs> side of you, which we know is a big side. I really do. It's my favorite thing about her. To see a player so young take pride in that end of the floor is impressive. Oh, what a pass from Sonia Rivers. Hayes was fouled. Sanaya Rivers leading the Wolfpack in assists on the season. Throws a dime to Madison Hayes, who gets a chance for two points at the free throw line. So Watson picks up her second foul on the play. Hayes went 0 for 2 from the line in the first half. She is a 79% free throw shooter on the season, so sees the first one go down. And her two free throws were the only two that NC State shot in the first half. Notre Dame didn't shoot any. I mentioned that first half went by fast, and I think that's why. <laughs> there you go. Citron 
usually takes advantage of points from the line. Not tonight, not yet. Brooks on the break. Rivers, just a bit of a touch. Is that a Dalgo? It looked like a Dalgo came up with that one. Yeah. Bransford blocked by Rivers. <laughs> it's a block party on both ends. Nobody here to stop us. Hey, James now, though, and she holds that hand high after the basket. What a sequence. <laughs> DeWolf to Westbound. DeWolf hasn't found her shooting touch yet in this game. The grad transfer from Fordham. Brooks playing with the contacts now for the fifth straight game, was wearing the goggles, and Hayes can see just fine three points in this quarter. North, North Carolina State knowing that Notre Dame plays that zone defense. I saw Maddie Hayes take about 20 of those shots in one minute. 8-0 NC State run over the last minute 45. That'll be a foul on James, her second. Sanaya Rivers asserting herself into this game in this half. You see her with the block, and State is up 38 to 20 against Notre Dame. Corner and earlier tonight, got our first look at this top 16 reveal across the country. You're looking at the top eight there. You can see NC State at six. Two more ACC teams represented, Virginia Tech at 10, Louisville at 16, and of course the important part of being in that top 16 is a chance to host the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament, as Notre Dame did here last year. Hidalgo fouled on that first play out of the break by Baldwin. That's Baldwin's second personal. They'll put Hidalgo on the free throw line where she is an 80% free throw shooter. First free throws of the night for the Irish. And this is what I'll look to see Hannah do in this half. She did a great job at it against Florida State, where she also had an off shooting night. She got to the free throw line. So you're telling me she had 27 points. But to, to your point, I, I, 7 to 25, right, from the field. But she was 13 to 14 from the line. Finding a way. Four points now for Hidalgo. All of those coming since halftime. No points, no assists in the first half. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's got to be the first time this season that has happened for her. Rivers pulls up. And Hidalgo with the rebound. Three defenders around Hidalgo. Westbell, a little more space to work with, takes advantage. Just smooth. When Westbell scores, it looks so effortless. She's right at her season average. She's got 14. She averages 13.9. And you get the feeling Notre Dame's going to need a big night out of her the way this one's gone so far if they're to close this gap. State being very intentional about taking their time. They're letting the clock run down every possession. And if it ends that way, they won't complain. Rivers with her second triple of the quarter. She came in shooting 22% from downtown. If I were Notre Dame, I would bring Maddie Westbell to every ball screen, definitely get her every touch, give her more space to work with. You see she's crowded by three state players right now. She's going to get all the attention. Dog a little head shake back to Westbell, open for three. Citron working the glass, gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Sonia Citron is a great rebounder from the guard position, and that's a great way to get some points on the board, is it crash the offensive glass. Well, Brooks somehow manages to get the ball back after it was batted around. She sped down the floor. As you said, she's been such a great spark off the bench for most of the season, but starting tonight for NC State with Mimi Collins unavailable. Hayes. She didn't make that one, but that's another good look for Hayes right there at the free throw line. Notre Dame, top scoring offense, top field goal percentage offense in the ACC. Haven't really looked at it tonight, but we give a lot of credit to what this NC State defense has done, one of the best defensive teams. But they can't stop Hannah Hidalgo on this position. 
possession. When she gets to that right hand and gets ahead of steam, she is hard to stop. She's either going to score it or you're going to have to foul her. What did Zoe Brooks tell us? We were talking to her, and when she told us those two know each other well, we said, what are, what are some of the tips in stopping her? She said, make her go left. Yep. Oh, Hidalgo making Brooks do things she doesn't want to do now. Jump ball is called. Boy, she is aggressive going for the steals. That's why she's the best in the country. I think a foul was called on the play in the end. Hannah Hidalgo with the drive out of the deep corner and the nifty finish. Seeing a little bit more daylight from her in this half. You see her playing with a lot more intensity. She's locked in. She's getting angry like Coach <laughs> Ivy likes to see. Two fouls of Jazz. So she's got to walk that line of, of playing with that intensity, going after the ball, but not picking up that third foul. Absolutely. Five on the shot clock. Hayes off the glass and in. That's a nice, tough, strong, physical take down that right lane line by Madison Hayes. Westbeld trailing behind the play. Offensive foul on Westbeld. That's her third. And that's a tough one. But I do like Notre Dame getting the ball to Maddie, putting her in actions, challenging River Baldwin's feet. But River Baldwin has been great today, sliding over and taking charges. This is her second one. I do think maybe she was moving a little bit, not quite set, but good heads up play from her to even recognize that that was a good time to try to take that. Westfield stays on the floor. Neil Ivey showing a lot of trust, of course. Short bench for Notre Dame. They've had injuries. Olivia Miles, Kazan Prosper, Emma Risch, the freshman, all of them out. Citron missed nine games. Hayes with the left. Yes! She's impressive. That, that is one of my favorite players to watch on this North Carolina State team. NC State looking strong. Under a minute to play in the third quarter. Just six games remaining, including tonight for both of these teams in the regular season. Will this be one that, that matters when it comes to that top four? And a double bye in the ACC tournament. Hidalgo gets it back. Watson just doesn't give up on it and gets River Baldwin to commit her third personal foul. So this could be getting dicey in the fourth quarter. Well, Saturday's ACC Network men's basketball triple header features number seven, North Carolina, hosting Virginia Tech at two. Then Miami squaring off against Boston College and will cap the night with Louisville and Pittsburgh. Eight seconds difference, shot clock, game clock. Baldwin tapping it, can't keep it. Hidalgo, no. Watson. Foul is called, I believe, against NC State. Both teams had players hit the deck. And it is indeed, it's against Brooks. It's her third. So Brooks has three, Baldwin has three, and for Notre Dame, Westbelt has three. Kylie Watson, as good as she's been for Notre Dame in her second year with the program, has struggled at the line. 57% free throw shooter on the season. Yeah, Kylie Watson has taken on more of a defensive responsibility for this Notre Dame group. She's really shown great improvement in that area. Another jump ball forced on the rebound. You think both these teams have been doing some box out drills <laughs> leading up to this one? They definitely have. Both coaches talked about how important rebounding was going to be in this game. So I'm positive that they were working on it <laughs> leading up to this game. Maybe I had to break the knee pads out, you know, for picking up some extra floor burns. I don't know if they still do that. They did that back in my day. Do you, wear, you ever put them on in practice? Yeah. I wore knee pads. I know you were on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 15 seconds left in the third quarter. NC State has outscored Notre Dame 15 to 10 this quarter. They were even the second quarter. Steal from Hidalgo, trying to turn it into school and does. Maybe even three for number three. 
That's a huge momentum play going into the final quarter of this game. Notre Dame extending pressure with the clock winding down. Zaniah Rivers just doesn't take, doesn't protect it. And around Hannah, you just can't do that. She will make you pay. She gets the and one on the other end. No points in the first half. Eight points in this quarter for Hidalgo. Short on the free throw. Bransford corrals the rebound, needs some help. Citron can't get the shot off. Still a gap of 15 points separating these two top 20 teams. One quarter left to go in South Bend. Duke has been tough to play against in Cameron this season. So that's a you know pretty hard stretch for them as well. Rivers gets fouled, and you bring up Duke. You're on the matter, of course, but <laughs> Go Blue I mean, they have Duke by far has the most difficult schedule left of any team that's vying for those top spots or even the top nine to get at least a single buy in the ACC tournament. They're at Virginia Tech tonight. That one's coming up here on ACCN after this game. Then they host Notre Dame. They're at Syracuse. And then they host NC State. All of those four in a row ranked opponents. Yeah. A huge Yikes. opportunity <laughs> to go battle tested into the postseason, though. How much momentum you can have, you know, coming out on top for a good amount of those games, if not all of them. I like that silver lining you're putting in there. <laughs> you sound like a coach. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. Ofer on the free throw line there from Rivers. DeWolf to Hidalgo. Eight points for Hannah Hidalgo in the last quarter. Starting to heat up for Notre Dame. Make it 10. She is. And something that I think Notre Dame can take away from that third quarter coming into this one is they were quicker to all the loose balls, in my opinion, in that at the end of that third. Oh, Madison Hayes quicker than everybody down the floor. Got a nice pass, too. And that's the thing with this Notre Dame full court pressure. You want to slow State down, make him think, use the clock, but you want to get stops. Bransford off the front iron. Nine points in the game for Isaiah James. As ever, a fairly balanced effort for this NC State team. 12 points to River Baldwin, 12 from Hayes. And I'll actually correct myself. I think they actually want to speed State up with this press and get them to take quicker shots, but they got to get stops. Baldwin with the double-double. Brooks off on the shot. There's a stop. And that's who you want to get the ball to. Ooh. What a block by oh Sanaya Rivers. Oh my gosh, those long arms of Sanaya Rivers denying Hidalgo. But on the other end, KK Bransford says, I see you. I got a little bit of that in my arsenal too. <laughs> that sequence has happened multiple times in this game. You see a nice block on one end. You see a team that's relentless come back on the other end and end up with a block as well. Got to take another look at this. So no, foul? no, no foul. I You're clean. I mean, I think so. Sanaya Rivers is so great at using her length. She kind of just timed it, knew that Hannah was going to go up with that right hand. And you didn't see KK's block on the other end, but great recovery for her from this Notre Dame team. And then Zoe Brooks picked up foul number four. So she's gone to the bench for NC State. Maddie Cox has come in. Totally different look to the lineup with Cox out there over Brooks. Citron has 10 now. It's got to be taking every atom inside the body of Hannah Hidalgo not to want to come over and try to steal the ball from <laughs> Sanaya Rivers right now <laughs> after that block. On oh, NC State trying to work the back door. Hayes was hit on her way to the basket. North Carolina State has done a good job at, at times when Notre Dame picks up their pressure. State has cut behind it and found something. And, you know, that's a team that has chemistry, that, you know, is experienced, that understands how to find success against any type of defense. Sensi State team has climbed their way to the top in terms of the ranked teams in the ACC. They currently sit at third coming into tonight in the ACC standings. Notre Dame just outside that top four in fifth. But NC State ranked in the top 10 for the 13th straight week. Came the first team in history to go from unranked 
into the top 10 by the time November was not over. So they quickly made believers out of some people. Hidalgo, that's her fourth. River Baldwin has taken four? Is that her fourth? Three or four charges in this game. The center, the yeah. center yeah. has taken that many. Hannah Hidalgo just goes up, gets herself in trouble by going up off of one foot and River Baldwin all night has been in the right place at the right time to take those charges. I think it was the Florida State game at home for NC State earlier this year where Baldwin had five charges in one game. So yeah, she is so smart and has been so quick at getting herself in position. Hayes, good. A Wolfpack feeling confident now. 16 in the game for Hayes. Because every time Notre Dame gets a little bit of momentum, they feel like something's going, someone hits a bucket, State answers. Now Notre Dame has come down from a 16-point deficit this season. 17 right now. That was at Tennessee earlier this year that the Irish came back, but they've not been able to put together consecutive possessions, right? Either, really on either end of the floor. That is true. Isaiah James with a potential mismatch here with Maddie Westfall guarding her. But Maddie is a tough defender. She stays in front. <laughs> but River Baldwin gets the short corner jumper to fall. It's been that kind of day for her. She's just doing it on both ends of the floor. Yeah, she had 12 points. All of those in the first half, actually, until that field goal. But yeah, we've been talking about her because of what she's doing on the defensive end, pulling down the rebounds, getting the double-double. And NC State looking strong up big at Notre Dame. Not a lot of people know this, but the gecko is actually left-handed. ACC Women's College Basketball is presented by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an ally. NC State looking dangerous on the road tonight. They have now found their largest lead of the game at 19 with just over six minutes to go. And Madison Hayes, she's the glue player, but tonight she's also leading this Wolfpack team with 16. She is, and you see the stats there showing that she's doing a little bit of everything all over the place. Without Mimi Collins today, probably a little bit more on her plate, and she's done a great job. Irish need points in a hurry. Got a good look for Citron out of the timeout. So Hidalgo on the bench at the moment for Notre Dame. She has four fouls. Zoe Brooks also with four on the bench for NC State. And a lot of time, Notre Dame allowing NC State to take off the clock, but they're down to five on the shot clock. Baldwin traveled. A rare mistake today for River Baldwin. She's had herself a terrific game. 14 points, 7 of 11 shooting, 10 rebounds. So fourth double-double of the season for River. Pass off the mark between Citron and Watson. Yeah, Watson can roll a little faster there. She might have got, you know, held up a little bit. But I'd like to see Sonia take that jumper off that ball screen. The, the, her, that post defense was sagged off enough that she's hit a few of those today in this game. That would have been a nice look for her. Mentioned earlier that these two teams won the last two ACC regular season titles. Notre Dame last year, NC State the year before that. Last year, they met twice, once in the ACC quarterfinals with the Irish winning by six in the regular season. NC State won it at home. And of course, 2022, the Wolfpack getting the best of the Irish in the Sweet 16. And we talked about this a little bit earlier, Jen, kind of, you know, off air, where we were saying that tonight is kind of the battle of the best of offensive field goal percentage that Notre Dame has yep. and North Carolina State, who has the best field goal percentage defense in the ACC. So you know who's winning. It's defense at the moment. That NC State defense doing the job, pack her up. Yeah, I mean, Gecko's a beast. I'm not 
sure anybody, to be honest, saw this type of a game happening. Jackie Young, maybe a player Notre Dame would like to have at their services right now. What a terrific player she was. But look, this is a shorthanded Notre Dame team. And you gotta remember Olivia Miles, that's where she's been sitting all season long on the bench. What a great player she is. And we were just looking through the stats. Only three players have scored tonight for Notre Dame. Sonia Citron, Maddie Westfeld, and Hannah Hidalgo. And if it stays that way, Jasmine, it'll be the first time in at least 25 years that that has happened. Yeah, it's definitely a tough recipe. You know, in most situations, you have some people having off nights. You can go down into your bench, find someone to make an impact. And, and there you go. Sees some daylight and knocks down the shot. But oh. yeah, there just aren't that many options. There just right? aren't that many options. Short bench, they've dealt with it all season. Unless you have someone like a DeWolf who's coming off her best game in a Notre Dame uniform. She is. DeWolf can definitely score the ball. She scored it well against Florida State. And here you see her getting a wide open look. If she gets a lot of those, she will definitely hit them. And I'll go back 345 on the clock. And Brooks also back. So those two both playing with four fouls. We'll see if they can finish it out for their respective teams. Isaiah James had the easy pass to River Baldwin right in front of her, but she tried to go for the cross court pass. Almost the exact same spot where DeWolf just knocked it down. Westfeld good and follow. How many tie-ups have we had tonight? <laughs> tie-ups, charges. Yeah. I mean, we've had several of both of those. Not a lot of fouls, not a lot of free throws either way. Oddly, NC State has taken eight free throws. They've made two. And Notre Dame two for five from the line. I like State's decision to bring their center up to get a catch and force Kylie Watson to defend the full court. And, and that's it. That's, that's going to do it for Hidalgo. And that's the risk you take. You definitely need her on the floor in order to get your team back into this game. So you play her in this fourth quarter to see if they, she can have an impact right away. And it's the risk you take. And she fouls out of this one. And she was just starting to come on in the third quarter after being shut out in the first. And it's instead the first time that she fouls out all season. And for this Notre Dame group, you know what you lose when, when you can't have Hannah on the floor. So who next can step up and make an impact? There's time to close this gap, but if not for this game, for the momentum into the next one. Rivers can't give that up. There are times that Sinai Rivers just looks like she's gliding on the floor. Oh, just an extremely graceful athlete. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's got a double-double, Sinai Rivers, along with her teammate, River Baldwin. And we talked about how she's kind of been off scoring the ball today, but she's still been able to impact it in other ways. She's, they put the ball in her hands a lot to make decisions for them, to settle them, and to defend. She just does a lot of other things for this Wolfpack group. Fourth foul on Baldwin puts Bransford on the line. Reminder that tonight at 10 Eastern, after our women's basketball doubleheader, our Nothing But Net crew has you covered. They'll break down the day in the ACC, have highlights and analysis, plus look ahead at the best matchups coming up this week. That's coverage you can only find in one place, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. This game tonight has really moved quickly with, as we just talked about, the lack of a lot of fouls. See those pick up a little bit here as we get into the final couple of minutes. Foul on Citron, just her first. And I feel like if you're Notre Dame, it's a good time to kind of talk about, you have Duke next at Duke. What can you do to end this game to kind of already start thinking about how you can be successful in Cameron? 
for the next one. You know, handling pressure, uh, rebounding, things that they, you know, can still do well to end this game and take that over into that Duke game. And that was the fifth team foul, so that's why two free throws and NC State will be shooting the rest of the way. Yeah, it's not just about the one, right? You can't let a team beat you twice and still showing some fight, not hanging their heads. I mean, it's tough. You want to win, and you especially want to win on your home floor. James getting up high for the rebound. Rebound advantage actually favors Notre Dame in this matchup. 44 to 39 for NC State on the glass. And it's not a particularly high scoring game. You know, this game has been execution. It's been, you know, a lot of those things. So it's not necessarily that, you know, Notre Dame didn't play great defense. They just couldn't score the ball. Yeah. 25% shooting for the game for the team that leads the ACC in field goal percentage to Wolf as another two to her name. And on the season, when Notre Dame has won the Battle of the Boards, they're perfect, 14-0. Mm -hmm. That record obviously in jeopardy with just a minute to go and down 17. But what an impressive performance to come here to South Bend and do this if you're NC State. Yeah, especially knowing what their schedule has looked like with the kind of games that they have to play on the road. You know, like we've talked about, going into the postseason, being able to win on the road is so huge. And you think about, too, at the top 16 reveal, NC State at number six at the moment. We'll see if they stay there. Maybe they move up. Let's see how they finish out. Virginia Tech was a big mover last season, winning the regular, or winning the ACC tournament title, excuse me. Wound up going to their first Final Four. And the Hokies coming up next here on ACC Network. Rippers trying for a little more highlight before this one ends. DeWolf, then that kind of night just hasn't gone in. The offensive rebound does give two more points and a chance for another for Citron. And recover, they will have to, Notre Dame, from this performance. As you talked about going on the road to Cameron, facing Duke, who's coming up after us here on the road in Blacksburg, taking on the Hokies tonight. But look, Jasmine, tonight this is just a statement and an impressive performance by number six, NC State. Impressive indeed. And without Mimi Collins, who has been great this season, the Wolfpack have to be proud of coming away with a big statement win at Notre Dame today. Yeah, doing it over a true AP Top 25 team, a true road win over an AP Top 25 team.